Hey everybody, welcome back to Josh Leoch's video blog. This week we start a multi-part series with our guest speaker, attorney Ariel Sakala, and we're talking about things that buyers need to be aware of when waiving contingencies in offers, something we've seen a lot of. So stay right here, we'll be right back with more information in part one of our series. All right, welcome back. Part one, today we're talking about waiving an inspection. Now we've seen a lot of things happening in this market over the past six plus months, and we're seeing buyers having to take a lot more risk in their offers to get their offer accepted. Now that is the market that we're in, and that is the reality that, that many consumers face when they're writing an offer. However, on the flip side, I wanna ensure that consumers understand some of the pitfalls or potential liability or exposure or just legal ramifications around waiving some of these contingencies. So today is part one, right? Today we're gonna to talk about waiving a home inspection contingency. So welcome to the show, one of our sponsors and our guest, Ariel Sakala at Crowling and Cummings. Thanks for having me, Josh. And I think this is a really important topic. Thank you. And I'm glad that you're here because uh, obviously anytime we run into these situations, we're reaching out to you for legal advice. So you're the one to give it to all of our clients and consumers. So I'm glad you're here to do this video. So what I'm looking to, I guess, get from you today is your opinion when you see a consumer or a buyer waiving that inspection clause and crossing it out. And I want buyers to understand what that means when they're moving forward in the offer. And at the same time, if you could, I've also seen some language at buyer, uh, home inspections for informational purposes only. So maybe even get into that language and what that means. And we're just gonna sit back and, and listen to the professional. Absolutely, well, thank you, Josh. So I think it's important for people to remember that when they go from the offer to the purchase and sale agreement, which is when they're gonna put their deposit on the line and they're really all systems go, the legal standard is going to be that they're taking the property in what's called as is condition, the way they found it at the time of either their offer or their home inspection. So however the property existed with all of its uh, pitfalls, re needed repairs, beautiful aspects, that's how the buyer is taking it. And that's the way the seller is gonna be obligated to provide it to them. So, you know, the reason for having that home inspection is because the buyer wants to have an independent third party determine what is that as is condition, what is the condition of the property. Um, and also because the seller doesn't have in Massachusetts the duty to disclose anything in particular to the buyer about the property. They might choose to do so, but they're not legally obligated to do so. So the buyer, it, the, the inspection is really to have this fact finding experience about the condition of the property and what they what type of um, investment they may need to make into repairs in the property to make it let's say livable or up to their standards or repair the immediate defects so when you waive that inspection the buyer is assuming all of the liability which they may not actually be aware of because they haven't had that that deep dive into all the various components of the property so it's very important for the buyer who's doing that to know that you know they may be taking on five thousand dollars in immediately necessary repairs ten thousand if it needs a new roof maybe twenty thousand and if you've got a buyer who's comfortable knowing that they've got a nice nest egg and they're able to invest in whatever this property might need then you know that's peace of mind that they have but for the buyers who are really um, have a tight budget and want to make sure that this home is going to be safe for them and their families it, a home inspection i think is, is advisable and then you've got that you mentioned that um home inspection for informational purposes only and when you've got that language in the offer what that's signaling to the seller is that the buyer's not actually going to negotiate with the seller and um, if repairs come up they're not going to come back and say we'd like you to adjust this or that or take the price down however if the buyer is having the inspection before the um purchase and sale agreement is signed, they may only have their initial deposit of $1,000. So if they have that home inspection for informational purposes and they find out that the roof is caving in, the foundation's crumbling, they may say, you know what, it's worth it to walk away and not put down our additional 5% deposit and only be liable to the seller for that, let's 
call it thousand dollars we put down with the offer. So that does offer the buyer, I think, a layer of protection so that they're not finding out after the purchase and sale agreement or after they buy the home that they may have, you know, thirty thousand dollars worth of repairs for the coming. Yeah, that's great. So one of the things I think we try to do with our consumers, and again, this is a very competitive market. Some of these things have to be done uh, in order to sometimes get your offer accepted. Um, one of the things we try to do, depending on uh, the level of competition on a property, is in that clause where uh, in one of the offers, I don't know if it's the Greater Boston Lamar, I can't remember which one, that allows you to put in an aggregate number of repairs needed. So basically saying, hey, if there's um, anything under this number, we're not going to really ask for anything. We're going to move forward. Uh, but there is a way to put in a higher number, you know, an inflated number, $10,000 or $5,000, basically showing uh, the client or the seller that you're very serious and you're not going to nitpick at home inspection. What's your opinion in regards to that, that language in that um, part of the offer and the position that a buyer is putting themselves in with that? I think it's actually a great idea. I think it's a great way to meet both the needs of the seller and the buyer. I actually did that when I put an offer in on my own home and that number was $25,000 because we felt like that was a number that we had to be able to invest in the property if we needed to, but also a number that would protect us if once we had our home inspection, we found out there were some major defects with the property, like a new roof needed or new major systems needed that we would have um, a parachute that we could pull to get out of the deal and know that um, we were insulated against some of those really scary repairs that we really didn't have um, the financial backing for. So it, and, and as you correctly noted, it signals to the seller that they're not gonna be coming back for minor repairs um, and, and restarting the negotiation process. So it, it signals that the buyer is very serious and that they're also willing to put quite a bit of skin in the game. And I think that that number is a discussion, you know, that you would have as an agent, and I'm sure that you do with your client to say, you know, what do you feel comfortable with to help us get this offer accepted, but also have you have that home inspection that can be very important. Yeah, correct. Well, this, this is an important topic because I just think it's happening so much and I think it's gonna to continue to happen so much. But I just really want buyers to have an understanding of, um, hey, listen, this is something that you may have to do, but sometimes agents may not be in the position to educate them or talk to that client to the level that they need to understand what they're actually waiving. So uh, this is part one of, of multiple videos that uh, Ariel is going to do with us. Um, so thank you very much for being here for this video in regards to home inspections. Um, next time, actually next video, we're going to talk about waiving the appraisal and what that means. So stay tuned for that information. Make sure you check out our next video and a couple after that on this series of protecting yourself and understanding some of those pitfalls when waiving those contingencies. So thank you very much for watching Josh Leo's video blog and we will see you next time.